Hello everybody, I'm Dana, the host of Stimulated Boredom, and thank you for tuning in for the second installment of the Stimulated Boredom video cast, or as it's affectionately known, Is Dana Wearing Pants? Who knows? Uh, quick update as it relates to the uh, radio show uh, for the week of July 28th, 2008. Uh, that's currently up right now. There's about six hours worth of content. I talk about Obama's trip overseas. I also talk about foreign policy, uh, the Marshall Plan, as well as a number of other issues that happened within the last week. So if you want to tune into that, you can get more information by going to stimulatedboredom.com. So um, I'm going to start off a little bit easy um, with uh, the second installment of the video cast simply because YouTube only allows me about 10 minutes and when it comes to stimulated boredom 10 minutes isn't even foreplay as far as I'm concerned because I'm used to recording hours of content per week so I have to try to condense everything into the 10 minutes that uh, YouTube allots for me to be able to do the program uh, so I figured I'd start off with a listener email that I received and give some feedback uh, on that so um, I'm sure in the future I'll figure out how I can kind of condense entire political arguments and historical and scientific discussion within 10 minutes, uh, but right now it doesn't seem all that possible uh, to do. So the first email that I got actually is from a listener by the name of Sarah. Now she's based out of Chicago, and Sarah um, wanted to ask questions relating to interviewing for a job. She wanted some job finding tips. Uh, and for those uh, who have been listening to the show for a long time, you know that in a former life I was in a position where I've hired hundreds of people. Uh, obviously I've been on both sides of that as far as being a candidate as well as being in a position to hire folks. And so Sarah wrote in and said that her sister had uh, lost her job and uh, she hadn't been on the job market for a little while and wanted some tips as it relates to interviewing. So obviously if you've interviewed for a lot of jobs and some of this might be stuff that you already know, for others or a lot of people who are uncomfortable when it comes to looking for a job or don't know some of the tricks in order to kind of increase their chances of being able to get an interview or being able to get a job. So to kind of start off right off the bat, if you're going to stick your resume on monster.com for instance, I think uh, you can use Career Builder. I think that's national uh, as well. The first thing you want to do is, based upon your experience, you want to actually do a job search of positions that kind of match the ideal job that you're looking for. Now, the reason why I say that are there are common keywords that are used within those job descriptions that most employers consistently use, especially if it's for a particular industry. Um, there will be <clears throat> kind of a common denominator of words that are used and sprinkled throughout all of these different uh, job posting. So if you go through multiple, let's say you look up about five or ten jobs that are kind of right in line with it, exactly what you're looking for, pick out certain keywords that relate to that position and make sure that you are sprinkling those throughout your resume because the way that the algorithms work on Monster and Career Builder is that if I'm an employer and I'm doing uh, searches for a particular job title, for a particular skill set, I'm consistently going to use the same keywords when it comes to a search. Uh, so therefore, if you have those sprinkled throughout your resume, it'll mean that your resume is going to come up higher in the search results. The other thing that you want to do, especially if you're on Monster, and I think Career Builder also gives you this option, is you want to consistently renew uh, your resume online. Now, how, what that happens is when you log in, it gives you an option to renew your resume. And what that does is basically tells the system that you are actively looking for a job. Now, if, let's say, for instance, you know, I've got my job, I'm very happy with what I do, but perhaps maybe I keep my resume out there just in case the dream job comes or it pays me $80 million a week, and I want to make sure that I'm at least out there and throwing my hat in the ring. But if I'm not actively looking, I may not consistently log in, I may not renew my resume, I may not update my resume, which means that it falls further and further down in the search results. So. If you're going on and you're actively looking for a job, if you are uh, have already resolved that you're going to leave your current position or you uh, perhaps were let go as a result of uh, kind of the economy and, and uh, people uh, cutting back on jobs and so forth, then you want to renew it on a daily basis because whenever somebody does that keyword search, what ends up happening is that your resume will always pop up on the first or second page and it tells the system you are actively looking versus somebody who hasn't renewed their resume um, you know, for like six months or something like that, and they're going to end up on page, you know, 50, and uh, the resume is not going to pop up as often. Then from that point, what you do is you obviously want to be very proactive. So if you find a job that fits specifically what it is that you're looking for and you're very interested in that position, you want to go to that company's website. Now, a lot of companies will use a recruiter or a headhunter for those positions, but they'd obviously rather not pay the fees uh, that are associated with using a recruiting firm. So if it's ABC company, then go to the ABC uh, website 
and look for job opportunities there. There you'll usually find a direct contact for uh, you to get in touch with. Sometimes it's even listed on the Monster uh, job posting. And what you want to do is try to make contact with them or that you found out about this job you wanted to find out who it is that you could speak with. Now what ends up happening for me when I was in a position where I'd be searching Monster for candidates because I was looking to hire folks for the company that I would work for is that you end up with a stack about this big of resumes. So what happens is if you call in to that hiring manager and uh, you have a direct conversation with them, what generally happens on that phone call is they say, well, while I have you on the phone, let me find your resume and take a look at it and see if there's something that we can do. So instead of that huge stack of resumes uh, that they're going through, they will now go through everybody else who's your competition, pull out your resume, take a look at your background, and perhaps probably at that time actually set up a time for you to come in uh, for an interview uh, for the position. Uh, then from that point when you actually go in, let's say for instance you uh, schedule the interview, you want to be persistent, let's say for instance you've emailed the company, they haven't gotten back to you, generally it is appropriate for you to follow up at least three times. It's submit your resume, then you could follow up with, hi, my name is Dana, I recently submitted for uh, my resume uh, for your consideration for your open position for, for whatever uh, position it is, uh, I can be available at this time, I have these skills, etc., etc. That usually kind of at least draws a little bit of attention uh, for you um, when it relates to um, kind of initiating the interview. Then you can do a second email and basically at that point what you want to do is you want to confirm receipt of your resume. So if you directly email the company your resume, then you want to follow up like maybe three days later. It's kind of like when it comes to dating. Should I wait two days? Should I wait three days? Which is really stupid and cheesy, but anyway. Um, but usually about three days later, you want to follow up and say, you know, good afternoon, I wanted to write to uh, confirm receipt of the resume that I submitted for your open position for this particular position, um, you know, and then just follow up in a, in, a, in a professional way as far as what your availability is, uh, you're certainly interested in the position, you could be available for interviewing, if it has been filled, you'd, be, uh, you'd appreciate uh, being updated as to the status of that particular position. And then the third uh, email, and this is if you have not heard from the company just yet, that third email you want to do like one more final follow-up very similar to the second follow-up as far as conf confirming receipt generally you can use the excuse that you just want to make sure that your resume uh, wasn't captured by uh, like a spam filter or something along those lines to make sure that they're seeing your resume so now let's say that you get the interview now obviously you want to make sure that you are dressing for the position so don't show up in jeans and a t-shirt a baseball cap it is always better to be told that you are too dressed up than to be told that you are not dressed professionally enough so you want to make sure that you are showing up to make the appropriate first impression because the first time that I lay eyes on somebody I immediately make kind of a snap judgment about the type of person that they are whether or not they carry themselves in a professional way and you almost make a, an immediate determination as to whether or not you think that this person has a really good chance uh, at working at your company. Of course, you want to get a feel for their personality, will it fit into the dynamic of the office. You want to make sure that that first impression is a good one. Uh, then when you're sitting there for the interview, a lot of people are really uncomfortable when it comes to the interview questions. I never know what I'm supposed to ask, Dana. I always feel uncomfortable. I don't feel comfortable talking about myself. So a really, really great question for you to ask if you are in an interview and you're not comfortable talking about yourself or your background, a lot of times the company will ask you, well, Dana, do you have any questions for us before we get started? A great question is, as a matter of fact, I do. I was curious as to what it would take for somebody to be successful in this position. Now, what ends up happening is they go off on a whole diatribe, basically describing the position and telling you exactly how to get that job. So if they say, we need somebody who's a team player but can also work independently, somebody who's motivated, uh, somebody who uh, thinks outside the box and is very creative. So as they're saying all of this, you are mentally cataloging all of the different adjectives that they're using to describe the most successful person for that position. And then you are, of course, kind of recalling your own resume and your own background so that you can selectively pick aspects of your uh, experience in your background that you can talk about. Well, you mentioned that you are looking for somebody who's a good team player. Well, in my last position, we had a team of eight, da 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 da, da. You also mentioned that you're looking for somebody who can work independently uh, without a lot of direction. Well, as a matter of fact, we would have separate projects when I did project management where we had to take the initiative on our own. That way, you're not going into a lot of extraneous information about your background that they're not going to be interested in. You are specifically picking um, what it is that they told you that they're looking for as far as the job is concerned. Because most recruiters, most hiring managers, uh, most uh, directors, etc., when they look through your resume, they're just really looking for to see if there is a high concentration of those important keywords that they're looking for as far as how they described uh, that position.